Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everyone who's online and to everyone who is watching live on Facebook, a blessed morning to everyone. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this time, for the privilege that we are going to hear once again your word today. Lord, give us, O oh God, a spirit of understanding so that we are able to understand and grasp, O oh God, your word today and that so that we will be able to apply in our own lives. Thank you, Abba Father. And as we continue in this service, O oh Lord, we continue to welcome your Holy Spirit in our midst. Holy Spirit, manifest among us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We give you absolute control in this service. Have your way, O oh God, for it is all about you and nothing about us. Lord, I bring myself before you as I'm going to deliver the message that you want your people to hear today. Lord, I ask that you hide me from the shadow of your cross so that only you alone will be seen and not me, O oh God. Anoint my lips, O oh Lord, and let your words, O oh God, be my word alone and nothing, O oh God, that come out from my mouth, O oh Lord, that it is not your will in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Today, I am going to talk on the subject of woman manifest excellence. When I was told that I have to speak on the theme of the ladies conference, Proverbs 31 right away came to my mind. So I took it as a sign from the Lord that he is leading me to talk on this woman in the Proverbs 31. I wish I could just other scripture, but I have learned a very important lesson that if God gave you a scripture for your sermon, just obey and do not ever try to change it. So now I read Proverbs chapter 31, I read from verse 10 to 31 from the New King James Version. Who can find a virtuous wife, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from far afar. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. And from her profits, she plants a vineyard. So, Sorry for that. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She, stretch, she stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. 
and supplies such as to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I want us to remember that in verse 22, 30, in verse 20, 30, it says, she is a woman who fears the Lord. Please let us remember that. Now, every time I come across this passage, I always ask, was there a woman who ever lived like this? And then I will ask how many qualities I have of that of Proverbs 31 woman. It makes me examine myself and question my worth. The more I read and meditate on it, I realize that even though this was written 3,000 years ago, it is not as outdated or old fashioned as some might have believed, but it is still relevant to the woman of today. In verse 10, she is an excellent wife or woman. By the way, this is not only for the wives or for the married woman. This is all for us women, amen? So in verse 10, it says, she is an excellent wife or woman, an excellent means. In the dictionary, the quality of being outstanding, not being ordinary, not being average. And I am sure that Pastor Adiaga yesterday, she defined it the same. So she is a woman of high morals who is upright in all her ways. She is rare to find. Chapter 11 and 12, her husband trusts her. He has total confidence in all her days of her life. I believe that this woman submits to the authority of the husband. Because I said in the beginning, remember that this woman is a woman who fears the Lord. And a person who fears the Lord means somebody who loves and obeys God's commandments. And in the Bible says, wife, submit to your husband. So this woman submit to the husband. She will always be beside her husband, helping him in everything. She prays for him, supports him, encourages him. And of course, she cooks for him, looks after him. She is industrious. She looks will, willing, she works willingly with her hands. Uh, verse 13 says, Woman's chores at home never ends. You agree with me, woman, right there. More so when you have babies or children. Women listening right now can imagine how busy this woman is. Verse 14, we read that she goes forth wherever the food for her house is and brings it home. Honestly, I am thinking that this woman brings food that are healthy, not McDonald's, not KFC, not pizza, but foods that are nutritious and good for the body. And it's so funny that when I was writing this part of the message, David came upstairs 
and gave me a um, plate of pizza because I asked him to cook for me because I am hungry. And even worse, that pizza was um, frozen pizza. It could have been better if it's um, prepare, uh, freshly prepared. Yeah? Now, verse 15. She rises before dawn to prepare food. She gets up early and sees that her family and her maidens are fed. Her first concern is the welfare of the family. We see that not only she brings the food, but she, al she also prepares them. We know that this woman has maid servants, but she does not rely on the works of the maid servants. She sees to it that she is there personally preparing the food for the husband, for the wife, and for her maid servant. This woman is not lazy. Not like this woman of today that when they have maids, they rely everything, even a drink. They will say, Lorna, can you please give me a um, cup of water? But this woman is so different. She gets up early, even though she has maid servants. It says maid servants, not only one servant. There might be two or three or four. So I can imagine the maid servant um, standing around her while she's cooking. She will only ask, prepare the onion, prepare the onion. But the thing is, she is doing the main thing. This is the kind of woman we are talking about in Proverbs 31. Now, in Proverbs 16, she sa it says, she considers a field and buys it and plants a vineyard. I have to pause on this one. You know, when you were asked to deliver a message and you ask God for revelation, yes? So, for two weeks, I was meditating on this Proverbs 31. As I said in the beginning, if only I can change it, I will, but I don't want to disobey for I believe this is the one that God wants us to hear today. So as I was meditating, I was at work and God revealed this to me. She, she considers a field and, and buys it and she plants a vineyard. In this verse, you know revelation comes either you hear it in your head or you hear it in your ear. So in my mind, as I was meditating on this verse, I heard the spirit says, tithes and offering, Lorna. I know you are shocked. I can understand because I felt the same. And I asked, Lord, what is tithe and offerings is going to do with this Proverbs 31 woman? And I know you have asked the same right now. So as I, as I was meditating, Lord, I can't understand. So it says, she considers a field and buys it. It means this woman is very careful with money. She knows where to put the money. She does not just spend buying clothes, buying shoes. You know, those things that are not really important. I know that women are listening so intently right now and know that as I preach to you, I am preaching more to myself. The funny thing is that sometimes a speaker is preaching more to herself on, or to himself more than anybody else. So I am not directing this to anybody, but I am just saying that God revealed it. As, as, as I said, I was shocked when God said tithes and offering. And I asked, Lord, what's going to do with tithes and offering with this one? And as I said, I believe that you have asked it yourself. Now, listen to me. This woman is very careful with money. She is good in budgeting. 
she just not spend money on things that are not important. And if this woman fears the Lord, and we define a woman who fears the Lord is a woman who loves and obeys God's commandment. I know you are getting me now. So if this woman fears the Lord and she's very careful with money, she knows the, the she knows the importance of knowing where she puts her money or his earnings or profit. And as a woman who fears the Lord, the first thing that will come to my mind that in, his, in her every earning, in her every profit, and I believe that even before she buys the land, she already gave her tithes and offering. In, in the book of Deuteronomy, please pastor correct me if I'm wrong. Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek. And the time of Abraham is after Proverbs. And the Bible is, or is in order from beginning to end. It is in order. So you cannot say that I'm talking in order here. Amen. I hope you get it. So tithes and offering. And even though that God gave me an understanding why she gave me this passage, I mean this revelation, that a woman who fears the Lord must, I'm not going to say the word should, must give her tithes and offering. And after that, I said, Lord, some of the woman is not going to like it. And I said, I'm going to omit that one. I'm not going to do it. But then, as days goes by, it's not coming out from my mind. So just this morning, I put it back again. Just this morning, I put it back. So what I'm, I'm saying now is, even if it is, even if it is for this purpose alone, that this message has been brought today, that there is a woman out there. I don't know who you are. I don't know who is giving their tithes and offering. I don't know. If you are not giving your tithes and you are being convicted, I think this is now the time to start giving. As I said, I don't know who you are. I don't know who gives and who does not. So let's go on. Verse 17. We see in verse 17 that hard work makes her very strong. Hard work makes her very strong. It means she's not soft, but by virtue of hard work, she is strong. She looks for work to do that are useful and profitable. As we said, he is not lazy. Verse 20, she extends her hand to the poor. She rushes out her hand to the needy. She's not selfish, but shares with the less fortunate. She's generous in helping the poor and the needy. She is passionate. Our church, Grace Chapel, has an excellent job in this one. We have a project that gives us the opportunity to extend our hand to help the poor and the needy in terms of donating food, in terms of volunteering, in terms of serving them in, in any other ways. 
and even during the lockdown, Grace Chapel has been distributing Grace Box, and I believe it's an ongoing on thing. So church, you are so blessed to have an excellent church and to have an excellent pastor who is in charge of all these things. She deserves our praise. Verse 21, she's not afraid of snow for her household. For her household are clothed with scarlet. Snow indicates the cold weather. This woman is not afraid of the cold weather to come because she prepares ahead of time. She foresees what is coming and she acts ahead of time. She does not wait when there is something to be done. Pastor Aviaga said yesterday that one of the enemies of excellence is procrastinating, procrastinating. This woman does not procrastinate. She does not postpone things. If she, is, if she says that there is thing to be done, she does it right away. Amen. And also in this verse, again, we have a project, a church. We clothe the homeless and the needy in the winter. We give them shower to make them feel fresh. And then we give them coat and blankets to keep them warm in the winter. And that is the Hope Hub. I know everyone in the church knows this. And it reminds me one time, Pastor was talking to somebody, I could not remember now, but I was there. She said, I want to have a lot of money. And then I look at her. The re and, and she continued, the reason why I want to have a lot of money so I can buy a big building, so I can house all the homeless people in Chesterfield. I cannot forget that. And you know, when me and Dave goes to the train station, when we go to Sheffield, we always pass by the vacant big building, that hot hotel building there. I forget the name now. And every time you pass there, these words of Pastor Toyin comes back to my mind. And there are times I don't pray it always though. But there are times when these words came back, comes back to my mind. I said, Lord, bless her plan, bless her heart, and let her word shall come to pass. Because not a lot of people will ask God to bless them a lot of money so that they can use it for other people. Mostly people nowadays are being self-centered. It's for me, me, mine, I. Amen. Verse 22. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. This woman, despite that she's so busy taking care of her family and others, she does not forget to take care of herself also. We see she dresses nicely. She makes herself presentable. She takes care of her appearance. Again, Pastor Adjaga said yesterday that a woman of excellence had to be presentable, and that includes dressing nicely and dressing properly. Amen. I like that because I like to buy dresses. Verse 23. 
Her husband is known in the city gates when he sits among the elders of the land. This woman made a significant contribution to her husband's position, being one of the elders in the land. One commentary says that Maybe it is because of the wife's good reputation that is why the husband obtained the position. Another says, a man's reputation begins with his home and thus the virtue of his wife. This is to say that we, women or wives, who or what we are reflects our husbands. Remember that when you get married, you become one flesh. Matthew chapter 19, verse five. I'm not going to read it, but you can take it down. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. These words describe the character of the woman who fears the Lord. Her inward clothing displays divine wisdom, giving her confidence to face the future with its unexpected challenges. Verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Her speech conveys her wisdom and kindness. Her words builds up and not tear down. When she speaks, it is to help. Pastor Sarah said, excellence is not perfection. And I believe that this Proverb 31 woman did not have a perfect life. Maybe at times she was discouraged, she was hurting, but still she goes out and encourages and supports women, men. Remember that she goes out to help the needy and help the poor. And that includes encouraging, encouraging them, supports them, pray for them. Verse 27, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She is skilled in managing her home. It says she does not eat the bread of idleness. She spends her time doing what needs to be done. She does not waste time on activity that would detract from the, from the well of welfare of her family. She is hard working. Verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. She is a good mother and a good wife. They see her unselfish, unselfishness, love, and care. The children praises her for her good deeds. She sets a good example. She trained them. It has been said earlier that she is a good wife. Yes. And she's a good mother. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Train up a child, and when he is old, she will not he will not depart from it. And a part of training to our children is by setting them a good example. Verse 29. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. This is to say that many women are faithful to their husband, but fall short of these other areas. She has done the best of all toward her family and to God. She is an extraordinary woman. Our speaker says that yesterday also, and you too, my sister. God equipped and empowered you for excellence in every area of your life. As Pastor Funke said yesterday, do not be content of being average. God created you for excellence. Verse 30, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. To have a wife who has an attractive look is nice, but best 
that the best a man can do is to find a wife who fears God and keeps his commandments. And she will have the other things as a bonus. Holiness and virtue command permanent respect and affection, far more than charm and beauty of face and form. A woman who fears the Lord is a woman who loves God and obeys his commandments. First and foremost, an excellent woman fears the Lord. Without this, I believe a woman cannot be called an excellent woman or excellent wife. Now, for the past two weeks, I kept thinking of this woman, obviously because she is my subject. If we look at the things she has done, any woman can do it. So I said, Lord, there must be something in that Proverbs 31 woman that makes her stand out. Because if we are going to look at the world standard, this Proverbs 31 woman is not the ideal or excellent woman. Yeah. So, I kept thinking of the things that she does. And most of them are manual jobs, practical jobs. She takes care of her whole household. She extends her hand to the poor and to the needy. Her concern is for the welfare of everybody. Her compassion was not confined within the household. It was stretched out the community. Then it dawned to me that this woman dedicated her whole life in service. She is serving people. And Jesus Christ himself was the model of this woman. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom of many. Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. To 40, it says, this is Jesus talking to the crowd. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take, and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you in as much as you did it to one to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Now, I should have said from the beginning that Proverbs 31 was written by King Lemuel, an oracle his mother told him. We as parents, we teach or tell our children some things, but we ourselves do not do it. Children pay attention to what we do and not what we say. I, I was thinking that it could be that the woman King Lemuel describing in Proverbs 31 is his own mother. And if she was, then yes, there was a woman who had lived like the Proverbs 31 woman. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us, there's nothing new under the sun. 
What happened before is happening now and will happen again. So women who are listening today, we are called to manifest with excellence based on the scripture we have read today. If you are in this journey right now, praise God for your life. And to those who are not yet there, including myself, by the grace of God, we will. Lastly, this Proverb 31 has fulfilled her purpose on earth to the fullest. She feared God and his commandments. Her life gave glory to God in the highest. After all, God created us for his own glory. In conclusion, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of mankind. Amen.